Happy New Year's, hockey fans, and welcome into our Chicago studios for another edition of your Big Ten Hockey Report. Michelle McMahon here, joined by Dan the Man, who's fully bearded and all, and back with us today. Dan, thanks so much for joining us. What is your New Year's resolution for Big Ten hockey as they approach the bulk of their season? Happy New Year and happy hockey, Michelle. And I <laughs> think for the Big Ten Conference, watching a lot of this high-end talent recently fly around Canada and the World Junior Championship, better things for the conference in this second half. With the exception of Minnesota, I think most of the teams can play much better. All right, well, let's see how these teams ring in the new year. Starting with Sunday's highlights, Michigan State versus Ferris State. It was a good one, Dan, and Joe Lewis Arena Sunday afternoon. And Tom Anastas, head coach, has a few titles under his belt as a Spartan himself. So it's scoreless in the first period, so we're going to go ahead and jump to the second. And it's Brent Darnell who toe drags, shoots, and scores. Michigan State goes up 1-0. to zero. Into the third period now, Ferris State would be on the power play, working their way in the offensive zone. And McDonald takes a shot, but he's denied by Michigan State goaltender Jake Hildebrand. He had 31 saves on the night, Dan. Michigan State still up 1-0. to zero. Lastly, in the third period, with one minute left, Ferris State pulled their goalie, and Thomas Ebbing takes full advantage. Michigan State wins 2-0. to zero and would advance to the GLI championship on Monday night. So it was a story of offense for Michigan State leading up to this point. But, Dan, against Ferris State, it was particularly their defensive performance that stood out. Why? Yeah, well, Rhett Holland provides an unlikely source of offense, a, a big goal. But look at Michigan State. They're not going to win pretty hockey games. They're going to win those low-scoring games. They lose a Jake Chelios, but, oh, yeah, they've still got a Jake Hildebrand back in goal and a smothering defense. That's their recipe for success. All right, well, we know Michigan State made it to the Finals. Let's see how Michigan did in their first round of the GLI on Sunday against Michigan Tech, a very offensive and a number five ranked team in the nation in the GLI Sunday night. Joe Lewis Arena once again into the first period we go. The Wolverines would strike first. Zach Hyman sets this one up for Cutler Martin, who lights the lamp from the glue line, and Michigan up 1 0. Just four minutes later, though, Michigan Tech would answer back. A wide open Malcolm Gould finishes from the back door. We're now tied up 1 1. Into the second period now, the Huskies on the power play, creating chaos in the offensive zone. A new face in the goal for the Wolverines. Steve Racine blocks it away to maintain the tie. He had 40 saves on the night. Into the third period now, Andrew Kopp feeds it to Zach Hyman, who goes top shelf off the post. Tink, tink, and goal. Michigan wins 2-1 on Sunday night and would advance to take on Michigan State in the GLI Finals. So for Michigan, they upset Michigan Tech in the first round of the GLI Finals to face Michigan State. How are they able to create the upset? Well, I like the play of defenseman Mike Downing. He was cut from the U.S. junior team in their evaluation camp. He could do two things. He could wilt or he could play like he's got something to prove, and he chose the latter, making all tournament team. He is a punishing defenseman and now starting to demonstrate more poise with the puck. All right, well, it was a showdown then for the Big Ten in the GLI Championship as Michigan and Michigan State went head-to-head -head on Monday night, and it doesn't get much better than this in Joe Lewis Arena. Into the first period we go, Andrew Kopp works his way down the ice and squeaks one through that seven hole and scores. Michigan up 1-0. We head to the second period, and it's Michael Downing on this one who dishes to Zach Hyman, who stops Pulls it back and shows it. Michigan goes up 2-0. to zero. Check out that replay, Beauty Dan. Oh, soft mitts. We're used to the blazing speed from Zach Hyman, but there he does the handiwork in tight. His 23rd goal of the season, by the way. So into the third period we go. Michigan State searching for answers, and they get a spark of hope from Rhett Holland, who rips one from the point and goal for the Spartans. It wouldn't be enough, though. Michigan would go on to win 2-1. to one. So the 2014 GLI champions are crowned, and the Wolverines earn their 16th. GLI title and Michigan not only pulls the upset against Michigan Tech but also pulls a win against Michigan State in the pressure situation of the championships but they did it without their four star players Dan how are they able to do that yeah it's incredible they did it because they got goaltending I think it shows you the amount of depth Michigan has if they get good consistent goaltending this past weekend it was Steve Razine sometimes it's Zach Nagelvort they could be one of the best teams in the entire nation because they have such high-end skill. And January 9th is going to be fun. Minnesota and Michigan right here on BTN. All right. Well, it was a victorious week for the Wolverines. Unfortunately, not the same story, though, for Penn State. They fell back-to-back -back nights on Monday and Tuesday against their opponents in the Three Rivers Classic. First against Robert Morris. They fell 4-2 to on Monday night and against the Broncos. 
four to one on Tuesday. Dan, is this because they had one too many cookies over the holiday, or can these losses be justified? Well, I think just a little wake-up call out of their slumber. Let's remember they're still on their teething stage. This young program, they've been a little inconsistent, and that's what they're going to be until they go from good to great. We saw them beat Michigan one night, then they lost eight-one the next night. So still learning as they go, but well coached by Guy Godowski. And another team that's been off since early December is Minnesota. They have a competitive schedule coming up this coming weekend. What is head coach Don Lucia's focus for the Gophers this weekend? Well, allow this Mariucci Classic to be a springboard for success that they didn't achieve last year. They were disappointed and didn't win their own tournament last year on their home ice. But look for big things. Mike Riley producing a lot of points from the blue line. The last blue liner to lead Minnesota in scoring was the mid-90s. Right now he's tied with Kyle Rao for the team lead. And last but not least, Wisconsin is taking on a competitive Michigan Tech team this weekend. Dan, how do you think the Badgers will fare against a competitive Michigan Tech team? Well, Mike Eves said they've had tremendous energy in their practices right back from break. I expect them to rise to the occasion on their home ice against a resurgent Michigan Tech team. Mike Eves likes to say this time of the year, they're no longer freshmen, they're sophomores. And boy, does Mike Eves and the Badgers have a lot of freshmen to deal with. All right, well, we'll have Saturday's game covered for you. And guess who's calling that? That one that would be Dan Kelly for you on Saturday night. As always, thanks so much for joining us on the Big Ten Hockey Report. For Dan and myself, we hope you have a very happy and safe New Year's. We'll see you next week.